Today we are going to talk robotics. Uh, I'm sitting here with Aurelua Babatunde. All right. I was going to butcher that. That's why I wanted you to say it. <laughs> I tricked you. I, th I had you thinking I was going to say it. But uh, Ore, right? Yes. Okay. That's the easy way. So we're going to call you Ore. Yeah. Ore is with um, Uplink Robotics, and he makes really cool stuff. So you are one of the uh, owners? Yes. So tell me owner. about that. Tell me about your company. So like you said, our name is Uplink Robotics. And so we started about two years ago, two years ago now. And we're four owners in total. So myself and two guys, one girl. And we all went to school together in University of Wyoming. So that's well, let's, well, let's hear their names. Who are they? So Brady, Brady Wagstaff. Um, Zoe Warthen, and then Christian Bitsas. Those are their other names. Okay, yeah. excellent. I believe uh, Christian is one that first contacted me. He is, yeah. Um, I found you guys through Instagram because I saw your bots, and I was like, I've been using, I'm a, I'm a big bot user, mm -hmm. so I've been using bots close to eight years. So okay. I get quite a, I get <laughs> I get so much experience using these. It's not even funny. I've done everything to these you can possibly imagine. <laughs> I've crashed them. The only thing I haven't done is caught them on fire. Oh, but we can work on that. So, yeah. <laughs> um, so you're talking to somebody who uses these mm -hmm. just about every day mm -hmm. for work as a home inspector. Yeah. Um, but yeah. I've been in the market. Mm. I've been in the market for uh, a newer model because I, I mean the one I've the one I'm using now, which we'll unveil shortly here. Yeah. is, uh, you know, I've been using that at least six years. That's been my workhorse. Whoa. I've broken it many times. I've had it fixed many times. But I'm not a mechanic with these. I can fix your car, but I can't fix these. I don't have the know-how. I don't have the tiny little tools that you need to fix these types of things. I only have a big soldering gun. I don't have the <laughs> tiny ones. You know what I mean? The, yeah. All those little things that make a difference. So, um, So as far as... Your company being very new, yeah. two years old. Mm -hmm. So how many products do you have? So right now on our lineup. So this year we're having quite a few in the channel, but mainly for home inspectors, we have about three in our lineup right now. Okay, for home yeah. inspectors. So you you also cater to other industries? We're, we're trying to break out into other industries, yeah. So I could see this maybe being used for search and rescue? Definitely. Oh, yeah, I could definitely, definitely see that. Yeah. yeah. Just like drones. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you something about the word drone. Yeah. You're in the robotics business. Mm -hmm. I'm not. People call my drone a drone, mm -hmm. the one that flies. Yeah. But are bots called drones as well? Um, I would say no. Okay. What yeah. would you? How would you ca uh, categorize them? So I would say a drone is more, when I think about a drone, it's more of an aircraft. Like you said, like the ones that fly up and fly right. around, you control. Right. While these... Um, more common names are like rovers, what people would call them. Yeah. They would, Mars rovers. Yeah. <laughs> I get that a lot at work. Yeah. <laughs> I get that a lot at work. But a lot of customers will see it, will see the one I use, and they oh, is that a drone? I'm like, well, it doesn't fly. Mm -hmm. So I was correct by yeah. saying that. So well, Okay, so I just I want a little so. clarity on that because I've never really had that conversation before with someone like in the, in the industry. So yeah. it's like, okay, understood. Um, I've had many drones. I've only crashed one. Really? That's and get, impressive. And guess what? I had to replace it. <laughs> <laughs> so the one I have now literally just started breaking on me the other day. And not because mm -hmm. I crashed it. The uh, the swing arm just started. It popped out of the body. Uh -huh. So if I take it out, the, mm -hmm. the uh, one of the propeller arms, it'll just sag. Mm -hmm. But it still flies. Because as soon as you turn it on, it sucks it up. Uh, yeah. And, and there's a and there's a block and there's a block in front of it so it won't go up and just crash. Mm -hmm. So I, I got lucky yesterday and used it twice. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, this is if this crashes, it's gonna land on a tile roof. Not good. It's two That's stories. Good. It was a two two I did two two story homes yesterday. So I gotta send that off to DJI, get that fixed. Maybe you can fix it while you're here. <laughs> I'll think about it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So so anyway, um, like I said, I saw your product. I've been looking for a new one. I reached out to Christian. He connected me with you. Yeah. And you and I tried a few different times to get this going, but here we are today, and we've got some unveiling to do. We do. Now, is there anything you want to add before we start unveiling? Um, 
No, no, not a lot. I would just say I was excited coming up to talk about this today because you are really experienced. Like you, like you said, you've been using this for a while. And I could tell from your YouTube channel, too, that you're really into crawl bots. And so I was like, you know what? Taking our crawler to someone like you who's used crawlers a lot. Well, I'm calling it a crawler because that's what we call this. Okay. So I'm kind of jumping ahead a little that's bit. That's okay. I, um, I was going to ask you that. What do you call it? You <laughs> yeah. call it a crawler? We call it a crawler. Okay. Yeah. Um, there's a there's actually another uh, uh, tool out there called mm -hmm. a crawler, and it's just something you lay in. Like you, you Oh, for home inspectors? Yeah. Oh. Like, yeah, it's got four wheels, uh -huh. and the body, you can buy it small, medium, large. Yeah. And you literally put your lower torso by your waist yeah. in it, and you just pull yourself around under the house. And it, it does work. And I know a termite inspectors that do use them. Yeah. Um, I actually have one in my van. In the event, I can't use my uh, my workhorse. Mm. So that's it. So one thing I want to say about uh, before we do this is a good topic to bring up is are bots going to solve every problem in a crawl space? In other words, mm. are they going to work in every crawl space? Mm. That's a no. That is a big no. So anybody watching this, you got to understand these have limitations. Like when I need a screwdriver to unscrew something, well, I'm going to use a screwdriver. If I can use this, I use it just like a tool. It's not a guarantee. So when I show up to people's houses and they know I have this already, mm -hmm. they're like, hey, we want to see you use the bot. Well, that'd be great, but I can't use it. <laughs> because if I can't go rescue it and recover it when it gets stuck or flips over or the battery mm -hmm. dies or whatever the hell happens or mm -hmm. it falls in a trench, if I can't go get it, I can't send it in. Yeah. So I do get a lot of calls uh, from About customers. Hey, I see that you have crawl bots and I have a really tight crawl space. I'm like, well, sir, can you get in there? Uh, no. How, how big are you? He tells me his size. I'm like, well, you sound like you're about the same size as me. Yeah. So if you can't get in, I can't send it in. Mm -hmm. And if I come out there, I have to charge you just to tell you I can't send it in. So it's not the answer. So anyway, just want to point that out. To, um, and I think any new home inspectors mm -hmm. considering these, you got to really make sure you have experience crawling yourself under houses because you're going to misinterpret things. Yeah. So there are, there are some ups and downs here, but today we're going to mostly talk about the ups Yeah, because this is really exciting for me. Mm -hmm. So you have here one of your, is this one of your latest models? So this is the one we've sold the most. So this is the original V1.1. V1.1. Mm -hmm. Okay, so how'd you come up with that name, V1.1? It didn't come up until we started making more. At first, we just called it the Martin, so M-A-R-T-N. Okay. So we just called it the Martin, and then when we started bringing out other versions, we're like, we should probably differentiate between all these other versions we're trying to bring out. And so we just yeah. called That's this a good one idea. the V1.1. All right, I can't take it any longer. Let's see this thing. <laughs> all right. Let's unveil I'm this. unveil this guy right here. So this is the Martin. Wow, look at the crawler. size of the tires on this thing. <laughs> and that's by design. That's for specific reasons. This is my first time seeing this in front of me. I have not seen this yet. So yeah. I actually had uh, uh, Orr come in here and say, I said, hey, cover this up. I don't want to see it until we're recording mm -hmm. this. Wow, look at the size of these tires. That's got to be, what, four inches there? Yeah, they're about four inches mm -hmm. wide. That looks pretty robust, man. Yeah, it comes with a monitor. And so we have like a little thing here on the controller where you just slide it in. Oh, nice. I like that yeah. part. You're good to go. I like that. And this uh, controller, is that basically for like an RC vehicle? Yeah. Yeah. And you just kind of, you can just buy. Is it, So it's is it pretty compatible? Like, with different types because this is the sh this is the stuff that confuses the hell out of me yeah like which one do i need mm -hmm. which frequency uh, there's, a, there's a lot going on there so it's like accounting if yeah. you don't do it every day mm -hmm. when someone starts talking accounting it's a little confusing mm -hmm. yeah so and so we actually send all this together and so everything is preset you don't need to worry about like what frequency do you need to change it to or whatever once it comes in the box you can just turn it on and it's basically Plug and play. Plug and play. Plug and play. Nice. Trying uh, to make it easy. And it comes in its own case? It does. Comes it in does. a custom case? Yeah. All right. Yeah. So if I am if I remember correctly, I if I am if I understand correctly, if mm -hmm. you flip these over, it just keeps going? It does. 
It does. And the camera adjusts for that? So the camera stays upside down in the view for now. Hopefully okay. we're working on that. But um, yeah, you can still drive it around. And that was our biggest, um, I would say, focus when we started making these. Because obviously home inspectors are getting this so they don't have to go under there. Or at least as much as possible, like you said. Right. It's not going right. to substitute a home inspector. Sometimes you might have to like go under there to look at things yourself. But at least you want to go there under there as least as you can, right? Sure, and minimal. So, yeah. yeah, exactly. And so... When you send this in, we know that there's a chance that it might get bumped. Something could get flipped around. And so that's actually the purpose for it's kind of like boxy design. It's symmetrical in the way right. that if it flips over, it can still drive. It'll still go in the same direction. It will still go. So if you're going forward and it flips, it'll still. Mm -hmm. Well, the directions, the controls flip too with it. So forward is going to be backwards after and then backwards are going to be forward when oh so you just have to know that yeah you just have to know that as the as the mm -hmm. user oh, okay i got yeah. it okay so what's it weigh so actually that's no, not too, bad yeah it's not too heavy and does it have a handle on the back it does have a handle okay that's handy yeah it's a handy handle there you go yeah and in front of me here i'm looking at the camera so let's point that over that way so here's the camera and you now can wiggle. Now is that a what kind of? Oh, I know what kind of camera that is. It's the same kind I use. The run cam. Yeah, the mm -hmm. run cam. So you have the run cam inserted in here, and it's very well protected. It is. Now the camera's not waterproof. No. No. Okay. Is any part of this bot waterproof or water resistant? This one isn't, but then the Mark II is water resistant. The one that we're coming out with this year. Okay, and mm -hmm. does that have this concealed more? The, the camera's that's, concealed, that's, yeah. and that's what makes the mm -hmm. difference? Yeah. Okay. And even the chassis itself, the body is more, um, more smaller, smaller gaps. You see this one has a little bit more gaps around it. So that one, we really minimalized the gaps to... And what, what's inside that door here? So this is the door for the battery. It's not in there right now because it's in the case. Okay. Uh, you open this up and you just slide the battery in here and this is the connector okay good yeah that's a nice that's a nice big connector i like that mm -hmm. i don't like these tiny little connectors man <laughs> dude those are hard to they, figure out they wear out mm -hmm. and they wear out quick if you yank them the least bit it comes apart i've had to do some soldering in the garage to save oh, my those... to save my week yeah wow. it's like man but they're so tiny i don't i just don't like dealing with that stuff okay. so i'm just blown away by how big these wheels are because these wheels are literally <laughs> double double in size, if not bigger, than what I have on my current bot. So yeah, and as you can see over there, you got some wire caught in that wheel. Mm. That's one of the, yeah yeah that's, like right here right yeah, yeah yeah that's one of the uh, that's one of the things that is a reality for anyone that has one of these or is thinking about buying one. There's all kinds of shit underneath yeah. people's houses. Mm -hmm. the, there's that old that um, uh, alarm wire yeah. None of these guys staple it to the uh, floor joist. They just leave it on the ground. Wow. So you got to be real careful because these knobbies pick up everything. They, they grab that cable. They spin it in. Mm -hmm. I've gone on it. My latest Crawlbot video I posted, I had to go on there and rescue it, and I left it in the video of me cl crawling in to rescue <laughs> it and cut the wires. So um, these, these are the realities of, yeah. of what can happen. Uh, the only way... I'm always thinking in my head, like, what would I do if I design one of these? Mm -hmm. The only way to keep that from happening is have something like almost like a, almost like a, a, a bumper yeah. come like around the like front that. of the wheels yeah. and just kind of deflect those things from getting in here because mm -hmm. that's the problem area. Yeah. And then maybe even something else here, like an arm sticking out mm. with a, like a T just uh, to keep, keeps guard. just to keep things from going in. But I'm sure that would have its problems too. Yeah. But it's probably better the way it is overall. But I would love to see some somebody design something like that just to see, well, is that going to work or what? Because they I've seen everything. I've yeah. seen all the problems, man. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think I can create any, any more problems with my bots. <laughs> so what else can you tell me about this that, you know, makes it exciting? Um, so I would say, first of all, the handle is a big hit. The handle where home yeah. inspectors can just pick this up and walk in. Yeah. They love it. It's yeah. like you're going to work with the brief briefcase. Yeah. So that's a good. And then point. 
I would say the camera too is really great because you have these, you see these two spotlights here. Mm -hmm. When we first started, we didn't have that. So this was feedback from our customers when they're like, you know what? It would be nice if the lights followed the camera as it went. Up Absolutely. And down, if you're looking around. And so we, um, Brady, he's our um, engineer who designs most of the body and everything. So he found a way to put these two spotlights here right by the camera. So that way, once it's going up and down, it follows it. Yeah. Yeah. So. That's good. Cause if you're right under a pipe and you mm -hmm. got to get a good shot of that, if your light's only going that way, you're going to be in the dark. Exactly. Lighting is super important on these. So is this an led? Yes. Those are it is an LED. Okay. And these, LED and these ones here also LEDs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Any way we can fire this up to see how bright yeah, they are. Definitely. All right. So this is the battery. And so you just unscrew the top, slide it in there. So the connectors, there's no way you can mess it up. <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah. One's a uh, oblong and mm -hmm. like a half round, and one's round. Yeah, that's good. So plug that in there for us old guys that can't see. <laughs> that's what that's for. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, everyone needs it. <laughs> yep. All right, and then this is the controller. So you have the power button here. You just slide that up. So it's going to tell you to put all the switches in the upward direction and take this down. Okay. Yeah, that's what I typically do now. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then I'm just going to turn on the monitor. Yeah, we'll get to that in a minute. Okay. All that stuff. I just want to see the lights for now. Okay. So the power switch is back here. Okay. So you just flip it on. And it goes shooting across the table. <laughs> <laughs> Thankfully, you didn't do that. <laughs> you would be surprised about how many... Things happen when you're an engineer and you're making things. Oh, yeah. And you're like, this works perfectly. And then you take it in for the big moment and then you turn it on and it's like, what's going on? Why isn't <laughs> it working? It worked five minutes ago. <laughs> Electronics, man. Yeah. They're very sensitive. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to, that's the camera gimbal going up and down. All right. That's the lights. Nice. So you see that spotlight going with it. I see. Two different color temperatures on the lights mm -hmm. there. Okay. Yeah. Cool. All right. And and how, any feedback on the brightness being good enough now? Yes. Yeah. So one thing actually the one of some of the home inspectors told us was that it was actually too bright for them. And so we're like, OK, we're going to work on that. And so the next version we're coming out with has a control for how you can make it dimmer or brighter based on what you want. Right. So what I currently do with the one I use mm -hmm. is I have a camera light and I have LED light strip across the front. Mm -hmm. So if I'm in a spot and it looks like it's too shiny, mm -hmm. what they mean by too bright is that it's a, it's hitting a reflective surface yeah. and you can't really see what's going on. Mm -hmm. So I just turn off the LED for a second mm -hmm. and the camera light typically gives me enough. Uh, so maybe consider just an, an, a way to turn off one of the two light systems. Yeah, That's might be an easier solution than that's trying good. to create a adjustable thing i don't yeah. even know if that's possible but <laughs> i'm just saying it, it, it works because mm -hmm. I, I, I do run into that so that's legit that's a legit yeah. request right there yeah awesome man uh th does it does this thing turn yeah i can turn it right now yeah yeah I? go ahead oh Woo! Strike nice right in your eyes that's all right I'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> <That's okay>. <laughs> <laughs> all right cool can i see the monitor i just want to see yeah. uh, face it towards you okay uh, face it towards you, and then uh, I want to see the uh, image quality. Yeah. Oh, and it's got a battery display on the it back? It does. It oh, tells yeah. you how your battery is. Okay, got it. And what's the uh, what's the resolution on this camera? So the resolution for videos, it records 4K. Okay. And then for images, it does 12 megapixels. Okay. Yeah. Got it. All right, cool. All right. Um, and... Yeah, let me show everybody the LED on the back of the battery. I don't know if you can see that, but it's got a light there. shows you mm -hmm. the charge. That's really cool. Yeah. That's really cool. I like that. So this one here obviously works off of that controller. Yes. And a mo separate monitor. Mm -hmm. um, now, are there other ones that you have that you have to use a smartphone? Yes. So we have one. So this lineup is the Martin. So we have one that's called the Mink. And that's kind of like our lower tier kind of the um, mink you call yes, it we call it the mink. have you seen that, vi that video series on youtube the mink man no i haven't oh dude <laughs> this guy trained uh, trained minks mm -hmm. to go chase rats you got to see this i Ooh. mean he has these 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 minks work 
side by side with mm-hmm. dogs and they go to farms where major rat infestations are mm-hmm. and the dogs don't mistake the mink for a rat. Wow. And they, they know the difference. They get out of the way. The owner's right there giving them commands. You got to see it. It's amazing. amazing. And that little mink, they just love going after rats. They'll go in their holes <laughs> and fight them in there, uh-huh. kill them and drag them out. Whoa. And they put them right in a bucket. He's got them trained like Whoa. that. Even the dogs will, bu- will bite them, uh-huh. shake them to death, kill them and drop them in a bucket. This, you got to see impressive. it. That's I think, I think it's apparently. called Mink Man. Yeah. Okay. Mink Man. I'll need to check it out. out. So anyway, I'm continue with your mink. So it doesn't. Oh, so sure. it, it bleeps every time. Okay, got it. A second. So I'm just going to turn this off. And then we can get back to it. And if it flips over. Yeah. It just looks like that. Yeah. And so that's why we have this kind of like boxy symmetric view. So once it flips over, it basically keeps going you can it's got it. it's got a good wide stance to it mm-hmm. that i like i do like the wide stance i'm curious to see how this is going to work on pipes but don't worry we're going to do a little demo later you will. under my house <laughs> right where we're sitting we're going to be under there jumping over pipes and stuff later yeah uh, we're going to see, see see what this thing can really do i was coming over here and i was like you have a lot of uh, john has a lot of experience with crawl bots i'm just going to give you the controls and be like <laughs> Just drive it. <laughs> drive it and let me know. <laughs> and what's the miles per hour on this thing? It goes around 1.2, I believe. 1.2 miles that's per hour. That's fine. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah, not the fastest, but... Right. Mm-hmm. So, um, one thing I want to point out is in my years of using, I got my original one here, and I got the second one I bought, which I still use today. Hmm. Uh, in the middle, I'm sorry, after... No, no. After the second one... A different version came out from the person I bought this from, and it was a track version. So I was curious, and I went and tried it, and it was too slow. Mm. Why do you need speed? You don't really want speed Mm -hmm. to inspect. Yeah. But if I'm done inspecting, I just want that thing to fly (laughs) out of the hole so I can continue on with what I... I I got a ton of shit to do. That's true. So... There's a there's a, a time and a place for the speed because some mm-hmm. crawl spaces are so wide open. Yeah. You can literally fly from one end mm-hmm. to the other to get that little shot you need. Mm-hmm. Double check that pipe. That's maybe fair. I'm inside the house flushing the toilet. I want to see if the ring's leaking. Mm. So I'll do something like that. So the speed does come in handy. Mm. Um so just to get out of there or yeah. maybe get in past the point you already saw. Mm. You don't want to waste a bunch of time because, oh, true. it's like watching water boil. <laughs> it's not fun like that. So speed is important. Uh, but to get you new guys, go slow. <laughs> There's a speed limit when you're new. You have to follow it. <laughs> uh, so let's jump back to you for a minute. Something okay. I wanted to ask you earlier. Yeah. Uh, how was your company founded? So okay. how did that how did that go down? So one, I think it was the summer of 2021. I and Christian, who is um, the guy who reached out to you the first yep. time. So he's the CEO. He's the CEO of the company. That's his position. And we were both working internships that summer. Mm. And so we had a nine to five and we were actually working from the same office space because it was like it that was about a year after COVID hap, um, started. And so it was everyone was still doing work from home and everything. Uh, and so we were working together oh, in wow. this internship. So yep. two separate internships, but we're in the same room. Oh, uh, okay. And so we were working there. And one day we were just like, oh, man, this nine to five is really hard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so funny. You yeah. young guys, man. What's work? <laughs> Continue. Like, this is a lot of work. So we're like, what <laughs> What options do we have? And we're like, well, we could start a company. And it was honestly a joke. We were like joking around. We had a whiteboard in the same room. And so we got up and we we're just talking like, okay, if we started a company, what would we do? And we're like, you know, we do like robots. We like playing around with robots and everything. So maybe we'll make it a robotics company. And so we kind of wrote it on the board. And then honestly, I don't know about Christian, but I walked back to my desk and like, ah, oh, that was really funny. And that was really fun to talk about. But then not really thinking much about it. Mm-hmm. And then we went back to work. And then some weeks later, actually, Christian. Oh, and before I forget, Brady was also working an internship that summer. And we were all kind of in the same space. He wasn't in our room, but he was in a separate room, but right. super close. And so he walks in with us, like talking about that because it was around lunchtime. We started talking. And so he walks in, he sees us talking and then he just sits there and he just looks at us. And he's just listening. And then he was like, yeah, that would be pretty cool. And then we all kind of talk and play around. Right, with right. It. 
And so that was kind of like the first time we talked about it. Mm -hmm. And then a couple of weeks later, Christian comes back and he's like, you know what? My dad's a home inspector. And he told me it would be really cool if we could make something for them that would go under crawl spaces. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. And, and what's and what state was he in? His dad? Yeah. Florida. Florida. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, wait a second. They even have crawl spaces in Florida? I guess they do. I guess they do. Mm -hmm. maybe, maybe it's for trailers or something. Maybe. Yeah, I'm pretty you sure know, everything. Probably. Uh, yeah, pr I'm pretty sure that's probably what it is because I'm, 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 well, I don't know. I don't live in Florida, but I've been there. I got relatives out there and I don't recall seeing any raised foundations. So it's yeah. got to be trailers, mm -hmm. something probably like that. Trailers. But anyway, that, that, that's a good story. Yeah. Uh, where's your accent from? My accent, Nigeria. Nigeria. I'm originally from Nigeria. Yeah. Your English is really good, man. Thank How you. long you been here? I've been here about seven years. Wow. That's seven years. That's I, nev I never would have guessed. <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah. All right. So you call it a crawler. We call it a crawler. Okay. Um, the one I have is called a crawl bot. Mm. <laughs> okay. I have to tell you this though. Okay. We were in a meeting um, this week and we we're talking about how I'm coming to do this podcast. And then Brady, who's um, the other co-owner was like, tell him to make it, maybe name it the crawler podcast now for this particular episode. I was like, I don't know if we can ask him to do that, but I was like, Maybe I'll mention it. The so. Crawler Podcast? <laughs> the Crawler Podcast. Are we going to do this weekly? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's got, Or's got to do a lot. Uh, or, or Ray. Or Ray. Yeah. Or Ray's got to do a lot of driving. Mm -hmm. So if we're going to do this once a week, he's got a lot of driving to do. <laughs> um, but anyway, no, that's 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 a great story. I like yeah. I like uh, hearing those types of things, how, yeah. how businesses started up mm -hmm. and all that good stuff. Someday we'll talk about how I started mine. <laughs> Not today. <laughs> Okay, so you are the software engineer. Yeah. Okay, what does that mean? So basically, the way I think about it is we have our phones, right? We have, um, whether it's Apple or Android, you have your phone, the physical phone. And then what makes it actually interesting is all the apps and everything you can use on it. Like a right. camera and like your text messages and all or that stuff. Or GPS. GPS, your maps. My favorite thing, GPS. <laughs> the the, the non-thinking app. Yeah, just plug it in <laughs> and just follow directions. <laughs> yeah. So that's that's the way I think about it, especially for this. I'm constantly thinking, what can you have the physical crawler? So what else would be useful to make this even more cool? OK, we know that you're avoiding crawling down there um, a lot now that you have the crawler and you can move it around. But what else would be cool for you to be able to do with this? If it wrote the report itself. We've talked about that. <laughs> have you? <laughs> we have talked about that. We have a lot of ideas. <laughs> <clears throat> Mapping. Yep. Have you talked about mapping? We haven't talked about it, but I've, it's been up here like a few times. If you take this and go under a house and mm -hmm. follow the perimeter foundation, it yep. gives you exact size, mm -hmm. and then somewhere it pops up on your phone or something. Yeah. Now we're talking. Yep. Now we're talking. Just just a little tip for you guys. <laughs> so continue. The software. So yeah. inside here is the brains. Yeah. Inside and there is the brains. You write that on a computer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we program, there's a chip in there, and we basically give it all the cool instructions and, first of all, directions on how to right. move it, and then all the other fun stuff. And where did you <clears throat> where did you learn how to do that? That's cool. That's cool. They, so I went to University of Wyoming. I actually studied computer engineering at school, and mm -hmm. so that's where I learned how to code, all the wiring and everything. That's where I learned that, too. The same with Christian and Brady, because we're all like computer engineers. That's cool. Oh, I see. Yeah. Computer engineers. Mm -hmm. All right on. Zoe, she's a business person. So she basically joined us and she was like a missing piece because we're all like yeah. ones and zeros, wires, this and all that. And she yeah. was like, you need a business plan and you need this. And Good for her. You yeah. know why? Because just because you're good at your craft does not mean you're good at running a business. That's true. That's the rule number one in life. Mm -hmm. Most people don't know that until they fail. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm so good at building. Mm -hmm. Great. But why are you out of work? Yeah. Because you didn't think about getting the word out, marketing, you know, paying the bills. Yeah. Stuff like that. Mm -hmm. That's super important. So I'm really happy to hear you found you yeah. found someone to, to, to fill that void because mm -hmm. that's most uh, business owners' biggest problem. Yeah. They don't know how to run their business. Yeah. So yeah. good stuff. I, that, that's, that is a great story. And I think you guys have unlimited possibilities with this stuff. Yeah. You guys can grow so big mm -hmm. and do so many different things and cover so many different um, like uh, categories 
like you said, search and rescue, yeah. uh, home inspectors, uh, you know, termite inspectors. Yeah. Now, termite inspectors have a problem with these. Mm. Uh, actually, the one, the original inventor of the ones I have, he was a termite. He is a termite inspector, but you know, he had good points. It doesn't look up on a sill plate. Mm. There is no like little arm with an eye on it yeah like in the movies <laughs> <laughs> that looks up and go doop looking out of now if you come up with that then you might satisfy a lot of uh termite guys but termite mm -hmm. guys when they see what i have yeah they're like whoa and that one of the biggest uh pleasures of having this besides its ability is the reaction from customers they just look at you like you're a rock star when you pull this thing up. They're yeah. like, "Whoa, you got a ro you got a robot?" Yep. They're like, "What?" <laughs> that's that's one of the things we actually thought of when the we were wow advertising this. Yeah, we we're like, you know what? If you pull up with this to an inspection, you're gonna look really cool and official to your um, customers. Right, right, yeah. right. Um, one thing I noticed with your marketing, and I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you a little pushback on your marketing okay. right now. Okay, this is this is only for you and your crew okay. to get to get a real better idea mm -hmm. of what a crawl space looks like. Mm -hmm. Your photos that you guys show for your crawlers, mm -hmm. that everything's too clean in there. Yeah. It looks yeah. like it's a set, like a movie <laughs> set, like it's all staged. <laughs> so if you guys need, um, you know, if I wind up actually getting one of these from you guys mm -hmm. and you guys need actual footage, like photos, yes. I'd be more than happy to. Yes, please to get you some actual footage of what this thing looks like before it goes in mm -hmm. and when it comes out and what it's looking at. Because uh, it's, there's a big difference in reality yeah, from sure. imaging that I'm seeing that you guys have on Instagram mm -hmm. to what I see every day. Mm. And that's important. You want to you want to be able to show that these things are rugged yeah. and they can handle these adverse conditions. Because... Mm -hmm. <laughs> So I'm going to put that thing to the test. My house, unfortunately, is pretty clean under there. I mm -hmm. do have a few things under there, yeah. and I'll put a few more obstacles under there later when we try <laughs> it out. But um, most of the time when I'm using this, it's it's a mess. Mm -hmm. There's pipes everywhere that they left behind from replacing the plumbing and rocks and drywall, everything. Wow. Anything you can imagine, not to mention the wire obstacles. Now, mm -hmm. if I have a major wire obstacle, I don't even go in that area because mm -hmm. I know I'm going to get it stuck. Yeah. I'll just put my suit on and go. Because mm -hmm. those those tires now, these are much bigger. Yeah. What's the height on this? So I believe the diameter is about four inches, the tires. So, okay. Yeah. So, no, the total height's got to be higher than that. More than four inches? That's got to be at least six. Where's my oh, tape? Do I have a tape measure handy? No, I don't. Okay, I'm right, back. Let's see how high it is. And I got my Stanley. <laughs> All right, so we got, oh, we got six and three quarters nice. to the height. So what that means is any pipes in the crawl space have got to be at least that high to get under. Mm. This is where any crawl bot can have a problem. doesn't matter how mm. tall it is. Mm. Um, because your tallest point on your bot is the tires. Mm-hmm which I'd like, yeah. I do like that because in my bot got a camera up here yeah. that sticks up higher. Mm -hmm. So I'd rather the tire hit the pipe than the camera the hit camera. the pipe. So that's a really good plus right there. Yeah. That's a check mark. <laughs> that's a good one right there. Yeah. So yeah. it's like staring at this thing makes me think about so many different uh, variables, you know? So, and then the, the width here is 14 and a half. And you want to hold that on the edge there? About 15. So it's okay. pretty close. It's almost like a square. Mm -hmm. hmm. I'm curious to see how this is going to work. 